Uh, I'm not sure where I left off on the last video, uh, but um, it's obviously I got the balancer on, I got the cam sensor in, and I got one head down that it's down there on the floor, ready to go. So I need to cover it up with uh, with some uh, plastic or rags before I you know finish up. But I was doing this head. This is the one that had uh, you know number one that had the bad uh, you know the bad injector on it, and um, I wanted to show you this. I have already. See if it'll pick this up. It's not going to. I need to put it down there a little bit closer on something. So it'll, I have already lapped this one twice. It, it looks like somebody threw a bunch of rocks in it. I'm afraid I'm going to have to get a new valve on that one. I don't think I can. I don't think there's much to clean up on that. That's. Uh, Ain't no amount of lapping. I mean, eventually I could get it out, but uh, it's just it's in bad shape. So it goes to show, uh, you know, that wasn't the only thing wrong with that cylinder. Now it was probably a causal effect of the fuel being going through that exhaust valve. The intake, I've had to actually do all the intakes but one, and one of them on this one, I know there's a mess on the floor. Uh, actually had kind of a bad spot in the valve where it wasn't touching all the way and then when I lapped it once the valve cleaned up pretty quick but the seat itself had a couple uh, the center section wasn't touching at all uh, on one um, I bet you uh, not quite a quarter of the way around so that took quite a bit of lapping on that one I don't know why that was that way but uh, it's kind of a nature I guess but anyway uh, just thought I'd bring you back and show you that that uh, there was some more damage to that. The intake didn't look bad. Um, just one quick cleanup, and it was you know it was smoothed out. But um, that exhaust one was pretty bad. Now the seat itself. I'll turn it around here. I don't know if you can see. I so far stuck my finger. It actually looks pretty good all the way around. The seats have actually cleaned up well. It's the valves that I've been having trouble with, and I know I said that a little while ago. And I don't know where this is going to fall in compared to the other ones, but. Anyway, I decided to show you that, um, you know, even when you think you've got everything figured out, if you don't tear them completely down, take everything to machine shop or tear everything down and do a visual inspection on everything, uh, or actually you need really even need to go above and beyond the visual part of it because, like I said, that uh, lifter, lifter uh, whatever you want to call it, pocket or retainer or whatever you want to call that being bad on that one. Now, I... The other three look good. They actually held lifters fine, but I just ordered all four. I could put one head on, at least get partially the way down today, but it's, I would rather just replace them all. There had to be a reason that went bad, so uh, I'm just going to replace all four of them. So anyway, I'll bring you back when I see something else. All right, now I'm uh, working on, looks like, number five, and, um, well, intake on number three Eh, you know what it was on five uh, it had a couple of spots in it that uh, again was not touching all the way around well, I got to the exhaust valve and I've done it I think I've done it twice now no just one time look at that you can see the gray it's kind of I know my lights probably not the best and then you see that shiny there on the left side of that 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 valve was barely touching it's just at the very tip edges inside and out as you can see up there on top, yeah, if my light will allow me to do it. I'm fighting a mosquito, which I did not expect. Uh, my light's not allowing me to... It's either too bright or not bright enough. But you can see that shiny spot there on the left side or a little dark or whatever. You can see it's different. And that that is not making contact. So I'm going to keep on that one. Probably going to take several attempts to... Uh, you get that. That's just another reason why you check this. You can't visually see that when you first take it apart. Um, that's kind of the problem. The valves beat. Everything is, is black and carboned up. And uh, you really can't see that until you actually do clean it up. And so the intake wasn't touching the best. It's actually on that same side. So it obviously with some type of machining, I, I'm guessing, you know. But, uh, you know, ran like that. But you can't tell me this isn't going to help a little bit of compression also. You know what I mean? Because these are not seating 100%. Now, I did, 
actually put uh, diesel fuel on the intake for about 15 minutes and they all held and I did it on the exhaust and uh, number one was the only one that uh, was sleeping a little bit and judging by that valve you know I told you it looked pretty pretty rough so anyway um, you know I'm not saying they were leaking but they sure weren't touching all the way around like they're to me like they're supposed to so uh, anyway, I just thought I'd bring it back show it to you that, that, that uh, just because you clean it up and it looks decent doesn't always make it so until you actually you know, grind on a little bit and you see that shine there that it's not, or that different color, it's just not touching, you know, all the way around. So, all right, I'll be back. All right, just a quick uh, quick update. I got the parts in for the, the lifter uh, holders or whatever you want to call them. And uh, this is what they look like new. Like I said, there is a difference between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4s, um, specifically because of the um, active fuel management. And after kind of looking at the retro kit, you know, they actually come with these too because you have to change the lifters. Um, I know there's a guy on YouTube who's finding, there's probably more than one, who actually finds a way to make these. Let me get a big one out here and I'll show you. Um, of course, this is one of the new ones. He has a way, and I think it has to do with that whole there maybe but somehow he manages to collapse these and then either pin them or do something with them or to make them come apart to get the spring off I don't know what he actually does but then kind of makes it into a standard lifter um, I think he sells as a kit even too but it's not near as much as uh, you know, actually converting this uh, proper but anyway you, you can't really put these in wrong and the reason I say that is uh, your standard pockets look exactly the same as the Gen 3's but on the active fuel management you can see that they have um, this is what was kind of missing you can see it's got that little notch cut on both them and that's exactly it actually has that same setup so you can only put these lifters in one way one direction turn it over it doesn't have that so they, they go specific plus you got the oil and holes are facing that same direction so there's got to be a reason for all that, and I'm not really sure, like I said. And like I said, your standard lifters are, you know, just standard lifters. You know, they slide in. Yeah, same way as the other ones, except, ah, come on. And then your uh, active fuel management, like I said, you line that up. It goes this direction. And once you do that, they won't spin. You turn the whole thing, but you won't turn them. And that was what was wrong with the other one. Uh, like I said, it was wore smooth out. So, wait, well, I'm going to go ahead and get this done. Uh, I'm not going to show you putting all this on, putting the heads on. I got the 4.8 video of me, you know, doing all that. And uh, one other quick update. Look at the hood and the roof of this Mustang. Yes, I know it's dusty. I was doing a lot of woodwork, sawing and stuff here about, to, well, it's been almost a month ago. The car had a complete layer of dust on it, and now it doesn't. There's only one thing that causes that, guys. And that's leaving your doggone garage door open for 20 minutes on a Sunday and coming back on a Tuesday and finding a cat living in it in your garage. So, not blaming the cat, I guess. Neighbor who lets him run around. I'll have to blame him, I suppose. Luckily, he didn't tear anything up, but um, I keep the MG covered. Uh, he was up on the roof when I come walking in. I've got a camera out here, and uh, I did not check it. I generally kind of peek in every once in a while to see what's going on, and I've seen it had been going off. It had been progressively, because it's, it's motion activated uh, also. And uh, I noticed it had been going off a few times, but we've had the wind. Uh, last night was the worst wind I think I've felt here. I, I think we had 75-mile-an-hour gusts. Um, it was like a standard 40 mile an hour and then it was uh yeah it was that that front that came in is one this is the 27th of november of 19 so colorado got hit with the snow and everything like that and this was kind of the wrap around at the bottom of that storm came through kansas and got us pretty good we didn't get any moisture or anything out of it but it's uh anyway all right i'm gonna get back on this and next time you see this this motor will be complete and i'm gonna stab it in uh don't sure when but um i'm gonna get it in and um, I don't know if you noticed it on the, but I do have the motor mounts and 
stuff like that on and i got the ac you probably can't see it but i got the ac bracket on too also put the dowels in the block i don't know if i had that last time when you seen it but anyway um i'm going to pull this fitting out and make sure i can put all that together and i'm going to put the engine in my plan is to actually have it completely bolted up as much as i can i'm not sure when i got the bracket i don't know if i saw this said this on another video when i got the alternator and the power steering bracket on i'm not sure i can get to this fitting so i'm going to see before i hook that up but what i'd really like to do and i, I they don't i really haven't seen or looked i guess maybe i better say it that way at the recommendations on how to do the oil in system basically you put three quarts of oil in the motor and you put the three quarts of oil in the in the, uh, the primer that i bought you hook it up to that hook the air up to it to x amount of ps i have not read the instructions on the box and then as it's priming you spin the engine around with the crankshaft with the you know with with your ratchet and i i will i can do that that's not a problem but um i was wondering once it's got like five quarts in it i wonder if i just keep the fuel pump relay out and crank the engine with uh, with a starter a little bit too make sure that it's getting pumped up everywhere but i don't know we're going to follow the instructions and see what it says and uh, we'll go from there but uh, hopefully the next time you see it i'll be the engine will be in and i'll be priming it and you'll kind of i'll kind of see i will have a mechanical gauge on it like i've said and you can kind of see what it's doing and how it's because i don't have a clue this will be my first time also doing it so all right guys see you in a little bit